I know. I know. I know. It's just survey the land and sort of. Yeah. We're close enough, but not far. Right, yeah. 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 Do we want to say something about the podcast first? Something about the podcast. <laughs> uh, just Robert and I, um, we're here, we're hosting a podcast called Diversity Issues, and we're, we talk about uh, diverse characters and themes, and then um, like to focus on diverse creators, uh, most, mostly in indie comics. And uh, we we're happy these guys wanted to join us for an interview today. So uh, go ahead and get started. Um, also, this is our one year anniversary. We kicked off the podcast at Heroes Con last year. Fireside chat. <laughs> it's all like sit in semicircle. <laughs> yeah, that should be. <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome to our live panel for diversity issues from Heroes Con 2019 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we'll, we will be discussing the hit comic series Bitterroot with two of the creators, Sanford Green and Chuck Brown. Uh, Sanford has worked on titles uh, from comic giants Marvel and DC, including Wonder Girl, Legion of Superheroes, Marvel Adventures, Runaways, Power Man, and Iron Fist. Oh, Runaways and Power Man, and Iron Fist. And then Chuck has written Punisher and Black Panther for Marvel Comics. Uh, Chuck and Sanford collaborated on uh, Rotten Apple from Dark Horse Comics, a Harriet Tubman feature for the comics anthology Film Magnetique. And most recently, the topic of today's panel is Bitterroot. Bitterroot follows. Man, you covered this pretty good. Bitterroot follows. Uh, Bitterroot follows. Sorry, what are you going? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Focus. Uh, follows the Sangrier family. Did I say that right? Well, Sounds good. Good. <laughs> uh, good. Following the Sangrier family during the Harlem Renaissance, they are a team of monster hunters that specialize in neutralizing. A particular threat called Genu. So, Sanford, in a previous interview, you mentioned that the idea spawned from the collaboration between you and Chuck uh, for Pip and Magnetique, where you featured the work of Harriet Tubman. Can you guys elaborate on how one project morphed into another and how the plot, plot for the Sangria family came to life? Um, well, ultimately, the, the Harriet Tubman story <coughs> was something that was. In a, in a, I didn't realize how important that story was for me, um, actually illustrating it and helping uh, to bring that to life in the anthology. And when I was working on that actual uh, story, it really dawned on me, because um, me and Chuck had already talked a little bit about some, some, some ideas about you know, the, the Harlem Renaissance. He said, hey, has anything ever been done during that time? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. A, that's a cool time, you know. Um, but uh, you know, just kind of full disclosure, he gives me a lot of ideas, and some I listen to, some I may not listen to. So I just kind of was like, you know, you know. But this was actually one that was it really stood out to me that time period. But then working on the Harriet Tubman story, I'm like, hmm, okay, she might be a little more. Okay, that's a connection. You know, maybe there's some kind of way that we can, because I had this fruit, this really cool kind of idea about the Underground Railroad and it being um, filled with mythology and all these incredible, fantastical things. Because I feel like that that story is already incredible and fantastical, but what if you throw in some true fantastical elements in there? And when he started talking about this Harlem thing, I'm like, there might be a way we can bring this. Together, because now we're talking beyond just a cool story. This thing has history behind it, real, um, true history. So that's kind of the you know nutshell where a lot of that kind of uh, spawned. I use the word spawn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, normally, when I create something, um, it comes from either like um, some kind of trauma or some kind of past experience. But um, the bitter river was more about empowerment. Us and um, I 
probably a huge fan of the Hong Kong song, a huge fan of classic movie monsters, so I kind of brought those two together. So just developing the story and just diving into the history. And the more I saw about you know, the Hong Kong stuff from the outside, it's, it's a magical time. A lot of great things come out of the Hong Kong song, so it's like it's, it's, a, it's a great little mix of them and eight and eight and eight. So um, we kind of use all those elements together. Like he said, I'm, you know, we hang out every now and then. He tells me to book a book now. But I told him about a rent of about, you know, about the blues and the idea I had. He's like, hey, let's do that. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's go for it. And he didn't believe me. I said, let's do it. I didn't believe Yeah, you. right, whatever. Because right, 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 right. I dismissed him on so many other things. But, you know, that was the one that just, because again, it's like what you said, it was like the empowerment aspect of it. You started feeling, you know, when you said Hall of Renaissance, the first thing I thought was, that is an incredibly important time for us. Right, um, and it's not something that's really highlighted um, in uh, in our stories, our history. You know, you get it's starting to shed some light there, but in like stories, like uh, graphic novel format, I, I haven't really seen a whole lot of that. So yeah, it was pretty. It was kind of a, a no-brainer. Like we've got to find a way to make this work. So I started doing some sketches, and I, I didn't even tell I was going to do sketches. I just did them because one day I was just sitting around and. Like, okay, this is you know something that's I can't seem to shake this idea. Even you know, like sitting some chapter chapter design, chapter profile or something like that. And just and you didn't do that. You take it. Like, so where did chapter from? Like, yeah, they just came from that's what it was. Um, a few days later, you came up on the same. So design. as we talk about empowerment, if you see how you know self defeating we are about the whole very thing to begin with. So we needed this more than anybody <laughs> yeah. to be empowered with. Uh, you know, creating this uh, this whole world. And that's a good point. Sometimes you do write for yourself, and then you do what you want to talk about in your own industry, you know. Yeah. And hope other people will come along, you know, along with you. Well, but it, you're never going to be the only one that needs that. So you're putting that out there, and right. other people. Exactly, exactly. So you can feel the power. But like talking about empowerment specifically, a lot of the um, historical narratives that are dealing with slavery are so often. We also did a lot with um, David on the way to the Americas because he was like a war fan and encyclopedia. You know, he was a huge part of bringing in the historical aspect. Yeah, and just cool. weaving all that in your own work. Yeah, when I when I when we first started talking about this, so kind of backtracking a little bit to give the whole context of how all three of us came together. Um, we were going back and forth. And we had all these crazy, fantastical ideas, and then it dawned on me. I'm working with David Walker, who is, like Chuck says, a walking encycl encyclopedia of history in general, but definitely with uh, black history. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're working on, at the time, I feel, was one of the more groundbreaking series over at Marvel, with uh, Carmen and Iron Fist, and he wanted to do a ton of that kind of stuff in that series. So full disclosure, the 
the second part was going to have a lot of that kind of stuff that we're doing in Bitter Root. So thanks a lot, Marvel, for you know, cutting the book off because you've allowed us to, to now be creative and have this now we own it. They don't own it, so they think. So you know, hindsight is always 2020. So I was a little bummed out because they, they ended, ended the series. But David said, well, you know, we'll just, uh, and this is before we even put all three of us together. Uh, he was like, well, we'll just take this idea and then we do it for something else. And that, I was reminded of that, and I told Chuck, I was like, hey, I think Daniel needs to be a part of this. I'm telling you, you know, you know it's how to pull it all together, make it cohesive. I mean, he gave the name of the, of, of the family. We started putting our history together um, of the family, and I'm like, that's why we need him, because he can help bring structure to, to all this. And of course, with history, you know, um, I learned even more about uh, the ways of Bryce and Tulsa. And then he started sending me all these books, and, uh, uh, I can, and then we started watching a few of the documentaries. And of course, just for me, I, I don't know if this is a question that you want to answer, but I'll, I'll share this. For me, it was it was kind of cathartic, but at the same time, it was very sober of just how deep this thing is. Not just the story that we grew up with knowing, but just the history in general. And then it kind of it started, it started to feel a little meta because it's like you see what's happening right now, what's happening in Virginia, what's happening in, you know, you're like, this is kind of, oh man, we're, we're, we're hitting this lightning in a bottle kind of uh, situation. So it needed, it meant even more than that. I got emotional drawing certain pages, you know, uh, in the story because of uh, how it ties with, with history. Yeah, I remember reading um, a tweet from a social activist, and, and the reference was specifically about the young black boys who were heavily disciplined, and then when they actually learned a lot of the uh, everything that Dale lived in, you know, is, is like you were saying, cathartic to understand, like, okay, this isn't just because I'm, I'm a bad person. This isn't, you know, a lot of the plight of, modern day African Americans didn't just happen in a vacuum. There's history here. Right. And the other important thing about Bitter Root is that even though it's a really fun story, you know, the characters that have actually lived through that, so you get to live through that experience with them. And then also that matter. And in the back of each issue, yeah. those essays just give you such an important element of context to to what happened in the story. And our history is, is so whitewashed, and that's how, you know, as African Americans and, and, and other people, other Americans who are interested and need to learn this, because I always say it's not African American history, it's American history, mm -hmm. you know, and, th and this is where, unfortunately, where these stories have to be learned and shared is through our picture, right. you know what I mean? So you guys are like, actually, to me, doing like a cultural, right. you know, by yeah. sharing these stories because they don't get told. So many people don't understand like the history of gentrification, like what yeah. that, how that ties back to redlining, how that turn it ties back to like destruction of black businesses and things like that. Right. So the book I read is called The Quarrel Among the Bubble. And when I picked it up, it was, you know, more or less from just him on one of all sorts of like that. It talks about World War II and the Great Migration and so did we love. so intense, you know, it just went so much deeper than what I thought. But we, that's kind of what we want to do with the group. You know, we have these cool characters who we did things with those we did this incredible world, and I also want to keep this as a level of the world. There, there's, a, there's that old scene, uh, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down better. Um, with that spoonful of sugar, um, there's some medicine in there, uh, a lot of medicine, <laughs> and um, you know, we, we use that, uh, the, the fantastical aspect of it to, to pull you in, and then you read the essays, and then you read, and then you continue to read the story in general, and you start reading the history of each character, and it really does kind of, and, and it's, again, it's kind of this, um, and I, I'm trying not to sound a little whatever, but I honestly saw this. 
when he started talking about Harlem Renaissance and when uh, David and I were working on Harlem and Iron Fist, it's like this crazy synergy just started happening where all this stuff I was already feeling. I was already feeling this like we got to do something, man. We got to do some power on it. I got to use use the platform that I have right now to say something. And uh, our situation happened over at Marvel. <clears throat> And when we started talking, I'm like, okay, I actually, we got to do this. And I know this thing is going to do well. You know, I'm not, again, trying not to make that sound, you know, um, uh, you know some you know, eyebrow, whatever thought, but just understanding the cultural significance of it, because they're really good for me and I say this, but and then just even from a, Aesthetic point of view, if I can use that word, is black creators are doing it. It's not, you know, some, you know, I, I just honestly say it's not a Caucasian, or, you know, thing, a black story. There's a lot of things, but if you go to history and they can tell the story, it's fine. But I do think there's a narrative that will be set where you see us doing this on that day, not, you know, some, hey, we're just trying to put out this little comic book. We're, we're on the unique, the most, um, the, the, the biggest platform you can have outside of Marvel and DC. <clears throat> when we pitched this idea, I'm oh, sorry, I'm kind of going on a tangent no, right now. When we, when we went, we pitched this idea to Eric Stevens, Eric Stevens, who is the executive of Black Image. Um, we sat down with him, we barely got out two words, and he said, yes. He said, we need this. You know, it's coming from a you know, Caucasian male who understood because he saw us. He saw because there's nothing like that there. I'm just being real with you. There's no black creators on that level. Now, they just recently started seeing more with, um, with what, uh, what excellence is coming out. Um, you got, uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Bingo. Bingo, um, Bingo, 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 Yeah, I'm not 
I have used the one. I haven't used the one. Isn't that what Eminem be wearing sometimes? It's an excellent pick that up, by the way. Oh, wow. Yes. I appreciate the, how you all connect in the real history because, I mean, I didn't grow up learning the American history involving white people largely. I mean, it wasn't, you know, Robert and I have talked about this that, you know, her dad would teach her stuff and it wasn't being taught in schools. And, you know, me growing up in an area that's like 95% white, I didn't get any of that history. I mean, we learned a little bit about Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington, and that's about it. Yeah, it's like we didn't just yeah, that's, that's that's all. That's that's like 1985. <laughs> right. That's kind of impressive that you learned Frederick Douglass before, mm -hmm. you know, just simply because of his history. Well, that was a little bit in college. Oh, that well, even never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, in the comic, you have a lot of different people that are portrayed in your art scene. And mm -hmm. I, I drive to a place where you're safe and you know you're not going to get lynched, you know? So that's what that was. So um, it's unfortunate, but it was necessary. So that's my ideas of that kind of thing. So um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of incredible, we literally can write a hundred inches. Yeah, and the um, sundown towns are basically where yeah, like you, you had to be out of town, town by sundown. By sundown. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I gave you the green book and, uh, reference more than yeah, so the sundown, the green book and the sundown uh, things is two uh, fascinating uh, uh, 
So the book features four chapters, and they're Why is Venus for the allegorical representation? Uh, and then why are you picking? I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Oh. <laughs> I like monsters. That's a good answer. I like drawing monsters. Well, I mean, it's a it's a it's a fantasy world, and um, honestly, sometimes I think some people are just unredeemable. You know, um, some rapists and some other. So in this, so I guess the, the Targaryens, I guess their mentality of the healing these demonic creatures that people can be redeemed. And uh, um, even though that's something I kind of deep down don't really believe that, yeah, I'd like to believe it someday. But that's kind of like the fantasy of I wish that these demonic, hateful people could be redeemed and healed, you know. But on the other side of it, which is the chapter four, is someone's like, you know, just give them the F them all, kill them. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, watch them out. That's kind of what. The split in the family is. On one side of the league, you know, there is hope they can be healed. We're going to charge with this. We have to rise above it. We can bring them back and take care of other people and kill them. And then there's the other side of the family. It's like, you know, no one could redeem them today. You know, there is, their, their soul is tainted. They have to be basically amputated. Their soul is like, let them go. You know? So that's, cause that's the whole thing <coughs> in the family. So that's why it's demons. You know, I know you've seen a movie like werewolves or vampires, but demons are just. You know, there's things that took the ultra people that were first of all among you, you know, and, and some of these, you know, the nostrils and the, the, the hate that you think is the human, the yeah. red hats, you know. Well, you know. And, that's, and that's why we didn't necessarily call them the first thing to mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not, yeah. it's not that accurate anymore, but it's generally, it's why we use that phrase. Right. It's, it's um, I don't know what dialect African, um, because this again, this is a David David Walker thing, but I thought that was the genius of it. Yeah, that's smart because we don't want to necessarily make it because I well, the word itself is made up. So it's made it's made up from two different dialects, but it's an African uh, part of African proverb uh, folklore. But uh, that's why we 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 wanted to really highlight the redeemable aspect of it because we don't want to be just some But uh, so that's why we really try to show that uh, the humanity side of this and show them that this here, here's, here's a bigger picture. Here's what we're, uh, what our, our aspirations are um, in seeing you. Maybe not in our lifetime, maybe not in, in the same great family, that family's lifetime, but that's why we're fighting. That's why we continue to strive. That that's the empowerment overall hope to instill is that um, that that relentless uh, never give up uh, you know hopeful mindset. Because the hate may never stop, you know, they may keep going to the end of time, but there's no reason to stop life. Right. Yeah, you guys had amazing symbolism uh, in the story. Uh, specifically like you were talking about um, with with the, the demon allegory because the, the fourth character Mississippi kind of explains to uh, a young white man who is attending a lynching, you know, after, you know, he handles uh, the, the, the men, the gender who are going to basically murder uh, this African American uh, young kid. He basically tells how, you know, it was a corruption of the soul. Right. And it's kind of like, I feel like that's, even though he didn't use the word racism, I feel like that's exactly. The demon parallel seems so apt because a lot of times, you know, like like you were mentioning before, you know, the reference to to Emmett Till, you know, and that's why his mother chose to have an open casket because it's not just a matter of it's not just as simple as okay, my son being accused of raping a white woman, which you mean he did. What type of person does this to a child? You know, 
not in need. And so having that kind of like allegorical representation of you know them as as demons seems you know very spot on, at least in, in my estimation. And then the other thing that Ford, as he's explaining to this young white man that he's so the young white man decides to go with him, and what he kind of explains to him along the way also is that you know there are some people who are just born as and then there are some people who end up corrupted over time. You know, they end up being corrupted by the Jimmy. And so then with the symbolism, you know, you have these three parts of the same Jimmy family. You know, the, the main team in Harlem is trying to purify the soul, kind of like what you were talking about before. They have the Pico group that they're trying to uh, ground everything uh, into the serum that they can purify. But then you have Ford who doesn't believe that purification is possible. So he believes in amputation. And then you have the Dr. Sylvester character who believes that none of that's relevant. We need retribution, you know. So do you guys have any thoughts about uh, kind of the greater symbolism of that and the multifaceted struggle of these characters and how they're reflected in the greater struggle in American society as well? Multifaceted and very relevant today. Every aspect of that is exactly what's happening right now. You know, you got some that, you know, believe in, hey, we need to reach across the aisle. We have to, you know, heal. I mean, I think they all have the end, the same end goal, but different approaches of how to get there. You know, to some degree, we all want peace. <laughs> you know, for lack of better words, um, uh, some believe in, you know, uh, retribution. So yeah, I mean, again, it, it, it is, it, I said it earlier, it's like it's so meta, you know, working on this and you know, you're, you're listening to the news. I try not to watch it anymore because it's just, you know, but I'll listen while I'm working and I'm like, wow, I'm actually working on a story that is so significant right now. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, Dr. Dr. Sylvester is like um, the Regina on people that I respect that I hate, and they turn into these creatures like Dr. Sylvester. He's basically, he's a victim of hate. So he's a whole different kind of creature. You know what I'm saying? And that's just this, this evil kind of seeps into him because he was a victim of this and then rape and things like that. But, you know, he, he just wants to cure himself and the woman he loves, but the more it affects him, the more he kind of takes over. Um, you know, I'm sorry, sorry. you all read the Creator, right? Oh, oh man, you haven't read it. Well, that's okay. Well, that's all right. right. We're, we're out to, uh, what, 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 1400? Right, right, right. I have all that. Thank you. Well, anybody seen, um, When They See Us? Anybody started watching that? I can't even watch it. I, I had to stop. Several, I had to stop several times. Yeah. Yeah. Watching it. Yeah. 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 Because it was, because yeah. it was, it was, it was, it was affecting me so much. I should say it was. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how, that's kind of what our villain is about. He's a victim of hate, and it turns him into something else, something worse than those demons would ever be. You know, and, and, and you know, we're all victims of it, but he just becomes a whole new kind of, kind of creature because of it. And then, like I said, watching that, it was like, I, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I had to read work. I just didn't want to be around about I was angry. I was hurt. I have a small boy, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just watching this. I'm thinking about my son. So, you know, I don't. That's why you didn't answer my, my text and emails. I, I was trying to get probably trying to trying to finish the annual off of my answer. <laughs> I'm a little hurt. But uh, I mean I, I really relate to Dr. Zabrano a lot too. I mean I love what that story was a good villain. And I think he's a really great villain because you kind of relate to his pain. Dr. Groom, he just wants to save the world, you know. He's not really that he just wants to do it the wrong way. Right. Every, every every character that a villain that's worth anything also all, they all have that aspect. Of um, you can you can uh, sympathize or relate to. Oh, I can kind of see where <laughs> where this came from, you know. And I mean, that's a hero in that story, right? Yeah, and Dr. Sylvester actually says that he calls himself. You know, he's he, he's trying to figure out how to purify himself, mm -hmm. and then he, he at at one point in time he just says, you know what? I actually don't need to be pure. I am the 
and, and, and that's kind of uh, when it starts. And it actually makes me think kind of um, back to one of the things I learned, Tracy and I read um, David Walker's uh, The Life of Frederick Douglass. Yeah. And shortly before the Civil War, Frederick Douglass said, not in his exact words, of course, but he basically was like, you know, we tried lecturing, we tried the purification way where, you know, hopefully you could reach out and, and change people hearts and minds, but this is going to come to blows. This yeah. is going to come to blows. This is slavery is not going to end. And that's kind of, you know, how I feel that kind of Sylvester, Dr. Sylvester feels, you know, and some of the, the modern ones, like, like an Antifa, you know, where they're like, the mm. people in power are not going to think they're self-willable. It's going to come to blows. Same thing with Black Panthers. So uh, there's a quote in one of the uh, Back Matter essays. The United States seemed to keep its own history in order to protect itself from the truth of its origins. When I read that, I was like, it was so very simple, so straightforward, but so incredibly powerful. Yeah, from John Jennings. Um, and this is uh, some of the art that he did uh, uh, representing uh, Ma, the Ma Etta character. But I, I love that. I was gonna. I was gonna say. I'm sorry. Uh, the the creative team that we have behind us is like I don't know what other way to to put it, but we're talking like in 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 this specific subject matter as far as uh, creative talent, academic, you know, talent. We're talking all stars. And they're coming out of the woodwork now because you got people that are like not like John Jennings, who is world renowned. This guy goes across the world telling lectures. He's an Eisner winner on top of that, so he's a nerd on top of you know being this incredible mind, uh, you know, in history. And he he literally he came to me and said, "You don't let me be a part of this." He said, "I will hate you." <laughs> that's, 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 what, that's what Jeno does, the monster. Don't let the monster take over, man. But, you know, I was like, oh, of course, you, you got to be a part of this. So it was just, uh, it was humbling for him to even be there. I mean, he's more enthusiastic sometimes than we are. But he'll come back with these incredible essays from scholars all over the country. You know, and I had the pleasure of having one of uh, my colleagues, I teach um, uh, a master's. HBC with uh, South Carolina, the one they call Henry Allen, a colleague here now. <coughs> and now they are all like, have you heard about this, this thing that you're doing? What is this? This is incredible. So now we're reaching this this other than this academic demographic. Um, and this is something that uh, it's kind of going off on a side note. The industry, the comic industry, has been forever trying to figure out how do we bring in more readers? I'll tell you that. You put something out there that you know your mother would love, your sister would be interested in, your and you bring it to them. You don't just sit in the in a corner, you know, for lack of better words, at a con or whatever, and just sit there and just hold on to this incredible idea. Bring it to them. Um, I, 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 we're, we're both at um, universities, and we just said, "Here's something we're working on that has this." And now we got colleagues. Scholars from all over the country, the world, who's not only into this, but they're a part of it. And now they're going to tell all of their friends. And now we're getting requests from Michigan State and uh, Tuskegee and you know, HBCUs, other you know four-year institutions, and you know, and of course, you know, uh, we got uh, the, the comic side of things too. So it's just. It's incredible to have you know guys like him that's opened that door for us. I was going to ask how you guys recruit the essayists, but it sounds like they're coming. There it is. Yeah. They're coming yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. So can you guys give us a little bit of a teaser about what we can expect uh, coming up for, for them? You know, we have the the Red Summer Special that's coming out. Uh, is it August? I think July. August. July. July tenth. July tenth. We're coming back more.
lots of fighting and lots of action. There's going to be a lot of action. That's something else, too. We, you know, we, we, we talk on a heavy, you know, uh, subject matter. It's still a lot of fun. It's still a lot of action. Um, you know, uh, working with David the most, he knew what would get me going. I love the, the subject matter, but you got to give it something to make me want to draw on. That stuff. There's a lot of heavy stuff in there, so I'm not gonna always feel that. Oh man, I just read about the, you know, the Red Summer and what really took place. I don't really want to draw that. So give me something that's gonna allow me to to really get into that, you know, and, and bring out my best work. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of a lot of just moving parts in that regard. This story is a great match because we deal a lot of history, but the action. And then Ford doing his own thing in Mississippi, and then you have the Enoch character. We still have to find out like what's going on with him. <laughs> so yeah, so Uncle Enoch. Right. Yeah. Everyone's got an uncle like that. Crazy uncle. He's actually a genius, you know. Maybe. He knows some things with my uncle. It's crazy. Oh yeah. yeah. Breakfast Club meet the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just imagine those kids with cosmic ability. Um, well, it, it, it kind of touched on bullying and also bullies themselves. And then um, kind of based on some of my time growing up, and if, what if I had gotten you know, cosmic powers? You know, <laughs> I would not have been the nicest person. So it's a kind of typical story about, about, about bullies and about victims. But um, I think that'd be a uh, a bit of a twist, it's a little dark. Um, that's what Joseph and our artist is, um, Jeremy Trees, out of Detroit. And um, yeah, we can love it. You're going to have a fun view on it. Yeah, yeah. Is it a one shot? Or is it a it's a one shot. Tim, you had uh, an artist in the production going on right now at the uh, Columbia Museum of Art. Can you tell us how that came about? Um, they asked me, and I said yes. I mean, because that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? To, to have an exhibit um, in your in your city museum, um, which honestly, our city museum is more significant than the state museum uh, at this point. They're always doing incredible um, exhibits and events there. Um, they have this thing called First Thursdays. First of every uh, month, uh, every uh, first Thursday of every month, they have like it's free for um, to the public, and they have like you know uh, music vendors and all that cool stuff. And um, I they did the opening during that time, so we're getting in all these people that knew nothing about any of this stuff, and they're like blown away. So uh, they wanted me to come back. Signing that happened this past uh, past week. That was it was incredible. Uh, and there are people that don't buy comics and they came. And again, that's how you, you know, hopefully you bring in new comic readers when you do that kind of thing. So. Any other projects coming up? I'm doing some stuff. I'm doing a lot of covers uh, right now. You got the uh, Black Hammer forty five. Black Hammer. Uh, my man Jeff Lemire, um, doing some more stuff with him. Uh, I think I'm doing something for that Marvel 1000 thing. I got an email. He says, hey, do this, you know, Avengers piece. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's an old school Avengers. And uh, we're going to put it somewhere. Oh, okay. I guess it's the 1000, you know, celebration. So I got that. Wait, wait, wait for these guys to finish the, the art so I can get back on that. I'm working on the covers right now. So I, I'll kind of let you guys in on it. So the first art, we, I decided to um, to do neck and variants for my covers. Because, you know, when you have Mike and Noah and Tim Kevitz and all these guys, these luminaries in the industry doing all these covers, like, you don't want to, like, get 
drowned out by that. So I'm like, the only way I can get some type of notice is to do this five cover spread with every kind of monster, you know, Jinu and, and the family surrounded by those guys. So I did that. And, and then it dawned on me, you know what? Why not just make it So I'm doing the next art is going to be, um, I'll, I'll tell you guys since you're, you're all family, but we're all family. So uh, basically, it's each family member um, and they're standing on uh, a bunch of ears and roots tied together. And it's going to maybe, which I talked to Jacob about it, but uh, it will symbolize something that deals with them specifically. So each cover is going to have a character. You're going to see these ears and roots and then intertwined with that. So there's going to be something about them that's dealing with them. Easter egg kind of thing. And then the third art, I can't tell you what that's going to be. That's going to be awesome. Though. Um, before we go to questions, I'll just real quick, guys. For so everybody here knows they can find you downstairs mm -hmm. at around fourteen hundred. Uh, for listeners at home, where is a good place to find you all online or on social media? I am uh, C Brown eight hundred three on Twitter. Cool. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Sanford Green. Okay. And then we have the Bitterroot uh, store, the Big Cartel. Um, Big cup. Bitter root. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I can't remember which comes first. The big cartel or the bitter root dot big cartel dot com. We're 15 members. So, four questions. Uh, how we'd like to do this, so we make sure we get the questions, um, is when you ask a question, I'd like if we could repeat the question up here before y'all start answering it. Um, also, uh, by asking a question, you're consenting to be um, on the episode of the podcast. Uh oh, so don't say anything that will make you liable for lawsuit. Any questions? Hey, Jack DeMeo from Simple and Comics YouTube channel and comicbookinvest.com. Um, in March, there was the announcement about Legendary Pictures picking up the option for a bit of root. Um, I know you guys probably can't talk much about that, but what were you guys hoping to get from that like big screen representation? We can't talk about that. Well, his question was about the legendary option. I mean, the same thing to get out of the book. We want to reach more people, you know, maybe you know, change someone's lives, teach them something, you know, make a lot more easier. And hopefully, the, the, the film and the gets made will, you know, reach, reach more people and all these people. Do you guys have any? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. No, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Not even like just your fan picks? You know? there, 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 there are things happening right now that I can't even believe is happening. I'll even say it. Now, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Saw him. I've heard him in person. He's got, he's got the girth. He's got the girth. Mm -hmm. He needs to be talking. He can't take long facts. He needs to be There's a, there's a, what's the name of that show? It's called Chicago Fire. You heard of the black guy in there. Yeah. I can see him being forward. He looks sure uh, the last thing he did. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he turned black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see what's coming. Yeah, I can see that. I don't want to watch the You don't want to watch Well, no, he's standing. He was a yeah. sorry about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. We might need to talk. You got to put together a list. I do know that. You can say that. He makes my mad. He's talking about it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Oh no, we're not even she's not even in that realm right now. <laughs> Angela still got it. She still got yeah. it. So you know, once we're young, I'm, I'm really way curious. too young to see how it works out. Because in my head, when I when I'm reading a comic, I have a voice for each character in my head. That so you know, I'm curious how that'll match up. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, I was wondering because you have the people. You know, you're New York or Harlem, Mississippi. So, do you think down the road you may yes. finally? <laughs> well, no, no, not that. I thought you were going to say, were we going to tie in, like, you know, more like our roots? Because we, we're doing yes. some research. It's kind of light right now where you know, Charleston is involved. It's where kind of sort of our demographic. So, we're looking into, you know, all right, you know, there's still a lot of history way up on um, even in our anthology you know we're we're gonna we're going back we're not time keeping oh. per se but we're going back to my era when she was uh, a young girl in the great migration so you can see what she you know how, how, how awesome she was then you know, so and, and so with the invasion of the mission we, we outlined the whole story to actually have an end in our mind we may never end it but as we progress through this
We did an episode uh, reading some slave narratives to commemorate Juneteenth. Um, it's available if you want more information about the podcast. We have cards and little flyers. And Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank <laughs> you.